Hello there, my fellow space Egyptian engineers, and welcome to another episode dedicated to the forces of the Necrons. A while ago, I did a video on the Necron overlords, who are pretty much the ultimate authority among the Necrons. But when I did the poll asking you guys what you would like to see, the other option was the Necron Cryptech. So that is what we're gonna talk about today. We're gonna learn who these fellows are, what they do, and maybe most importantly, their skills and disciplines. If you thought the Necrons were OP before, just wait until you hear what these guys have access to. I am your host, for today, the Tomb World Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? A Cryptek is one of the technologists and engineers of the Necron race, and they are responsible for studying and maintaining the technology of the Necron dynasties. A Cryptek's powers mirror that of the psychers found among the other intelligent races of the galaxy. However, while psychers channel the energies of the warp to accomplish their seemingly magical feats, a Cryptek uses his highly advanced knowledge of science and technology to manipulate the universe's fundamental forces. What a Cryptek often accomplishes with his technology is nothing short of magical to the eyes of the lesser races. With his knowledge of arcane science, a Cryptek can transmute a foe into a liquid adamantium, turn him into a speck of dwarf star matter, set the air ablaze, call down eldritch bolts of lightning, and other equally impressive feats of technological arcana. Every cryptic conclave specializes in a particular field of techno-sorcery, in one of, so said, a hundred thousand disciplines. These conclaves were originally founded to share information and expertise among Necron settlements from one end of the galaxy to the other, but have since become fragmented and isolated. In the long millennia since the Necron's biotransference, the Cryptex have become just as stagnant and fragmented as every other aspect of Necron society. In the present era of the 41st millennium, the surviving cryptic conclaves are maintained out of force of habit rather than any practical purpose. Though cryptics have no official rank in the political structure of a Necron dynasty, they do wield immense influence. A cryptic's power springs from the army of Canoptex spiders, wraiths and Canoptex scarabs under his control but is mainly acquired from the ignorance of disinterested Necrontier nobility, who have no interest in the workings of the technology that they employ. As the tomb worlds need perpetual maintenance to maintain their countless systems functioning at peak efficiency, it is not unknown for a slighted cryptic to bring the maintenance cycle to a screaming halt, should his supposed betters piss him off. Hashtag Necron Engineers on Strike even the proudest of the Necron overlords will muster an apology when his soldiers and weapons stop functioning in the middle of the battle. On occasion, a Necron overlord will go so far as to recruit a particularly trusted and knowledgeable Cryptek to serve in his royal court. To entice a Cryptek to serve, it is common for an overlord to grant him access to the first pickings of precious alloys, power cores and focus crystals, in exchange for his services in a campaign. This can prove politically dangerous for the Overlord, as this essentially elevates the Cryptek to the same rank as the Necron Lords already serving within the dynasty, and so inevitably fosters resentment among his regal subordinates. Nonetheless, having a Cryptek's wealth of knowledge and expertise close at hand is normally viewed as more than adequate compensation for the political risk. Ultimately, the only thing that holds the ambitions of a Cryptek in check is another Cryptek. Should a retained Cryptek rise too far above his own station, a Necron Overlord will try to replace him by luring a different and slightly more humble Cryptek away from the services of a rival. This process can also have complications, and while no cryptic will knowingly supplant another of the same conclave, a rival from another conclave will not hesitate in doing so. 
This usually results in plots and counterplots, which can lead to rivalry, or even outright warfare, between different cryptex and their respective conclaves. It's like Game of Thrones, but with undying indestructible metal royalty. The cryptex have developed countless disciplines of techno sorcery, down through the ages. Furthermore, every individual cryptek makes his own unique advancements in its chosen expertise. As such, it is highly unlikely that two cryptex will ever wield quite the same abilities and weaponry. For the second part of the video, I would like to go over the five most common cryptek disciplines. But of course, these are far from being the only ones. The Harbinger of Despair, or the Psychomancer. Accomplished psychomancers are among the most keenly retained of all the cryptex. If their abilities are employed properly, the enemy's morale will be quickly shattered within moments of the battle's start. The Nightmare Shroud A Nightmare Shroud is an offensive Necron technology which appears as a small black cask, often carried by cryptex psychomancers. When opened, the worst terrors of a thousand eons are unleashed upon the bearer's foes. These terrors assail nearby enemies with phantasms of dread, as potent as any mortal danger. However, a Necron Lord equipped with a Nightmare Shroud becomes the embodiment of terror, with the worst fears summoned from the pits of Nightmare thrust into the minds of all those nearby. Palpable waves of horror are emitted from his metal-skinned monstrosity, and all who look upon him will find their courage tested to their very limit. The Veil of Darkness A Veil of Darkness is a device of Necron Techno Sorcery which can summon dark energies which twist and billow about a bearer like a ghostly cloak blown by an ethereal breeze almost akin to a billowing sheet of tangible shadows enveloping the bearer and his allies. When the darkness ebbs, the enshrouded bearer and those necrons nearby will have disappeared, only to rematerialize mysteriously some distance away on the battlefield later. This allows the bearer of the Veil of Darkness to swiftly reposition himself and his fellow necrons into an unexpected position, from which to better destroy their enemies. Every veil of darkness is fashioned from transpositanium, a substance so rare that it can only be found in a few places in the galaxy. It is highly sought after by the Necrons, and wars have been waged to secure it. The Harbinger of Destruction, or the Plasmancer. These guys are not subtle beings, for they choose to wield raw power rather than go to the trouble of binding it into other forms. Thus they are known as Harbingers of Destruction, as the spread of destruction is their gift to the galaxy. The Gaze of Flame A Gaze of Flame is a form of defensive technology utilized by Necron royalty, who choose to implant hidden weapons within their own body. Many Necrons do find this practice unsavory at best. Few, however, would ever question such a being to the face, particularly when that very face may conceal all manner of horrifying weaponry. When in battle, the eyes of a Necron Lord or Cryptic Plasmancer who has granted himself the Gaze of Flame burn with an unnatural ghostly emerald fire, and a flickering witch fire blazes from within their metal death mask. This gaze chills the hearts of those who look upon it, stealing away their strength and crushing their courage. The unnatural powers of this device are capable of slowing assaulters at the last instant, and can even affect tyranids, demons, and other entities who would otherwise be immune to such powers. The Solar Pulse a Solar Pulse is a Necron device often incorporated into a Cryptek Plasmancer's Eldritch Lance. When activated, it unleashes a significant portion of the Lance's energy. The energy emission is not a coherent beam, as usual, but a blinding flash of light, as bright as a solar flare, which blinds the Cryptek's enemies and illuminates the battlefield to temporarily dispel the darkness of the night. The Harbinger of Eternity, or the Chronomancer. 
Chronomancers are known as harbingers of eternity, as knowledge of the future flows through their every act. Very few of them are ever trusted, as they always seem to have a shrewd idea of how any event will unfold. The Chronometron the bearer of a chronometron can activate the device to allow him and his unit to exist slightly outside of the natural flow of the space-time continuum. This means that they are able to advance normally while their opponents move in apparently slow motion, as well as slowing incoming projectiles so those nearby can simply move out of the way. A chronometron also allows the bearer to take minor, but sometimes potent alterations to his destiny, by allowing him to glimpse possible futures and modify his recent actions accordingly. Any necron seen utilizing a chronometron appears blurred, its movements sudden and spasmodic, like a primitive pictorial or degraded hololith. The Time Splinter Cloak this is a Necron defensive technology utilized only by the most accomplished of the cryptic chronomancers. A time splinter cloak is encased in shards of crystallized time, with each splinter proof against any blow not landed in the split second formed in another moment. This forms an unassailable temporal shield against any attack which does not originate from the time stream corresponding to the precise moment of impact. The Harbinger of the Storm, or the Ethermancer. These guys can wield the fury of the turbulent skies. They can summon lightning or set enraged winds upon the foe. The Ether Crystal. This can control the fundamental forces of nature by summoning storms from tranquility and bolts of lightning from clear skies. In seconds, the targeted area can be assaulted by howling winds which have come out of nowhere, as black storm clouds gather to block out the sky, reducing the enemy's ability to see and target clearly. The Lightning Field A Necron equipped with a lightning field is surrounded by bolts of crackling incandescent emerald lightning that arc from his body to nearby Necrons, energizing and charging their living metal carapaces so that those coming nearby are electrocuted in return. And finally, the Harbinger of Transmogrification. These guys are the adepts of geomancy and masters of the science once known as alchemy to humanity. They specialize in the transmutation of matter from one form to another, and the instilling of animus within inanimate objects. The Harp of Dissonance A Harp of Dissonance is an irregularly shaped metallic casket laced with many electrum strings of different materials, each perfectly calibrated to a precise level of tension. A correctly played booming note, when amplified and focused through the arcane technology housed within the harp, can burst the molecular bonds of almost any material. Many an enemy has underestimated the power of an innocent-looking harp of dissonance, most often fatally, for a single booming note from its electrum strings can transmute adamantium plate to brittle glass. Unlike many other cryptic weapons, a harp of dissonance has almost limitless range, and its effects are similar to the entropic bites of canoptic scarabs. Any armor affected by a Harp of Dissonance energy will also lose its environmental seal, exposing a vehicle's or suit of power armor's occupants to whatever toxic hazards may exist in the ambient atmosphere. The Seismic Crucible With this device, the bearer can command the very earth beneath his feet, and more importantly, beneath the feet of his enemies to induce localized tremors in rock, metal, and even the air itself. The energies unleashed by a seismic crucible can often stun the enemy for crucial moments, allowing supporting Necron units to finish them off. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Necron Cryptex and their abilities and superpowered artifacts for today. Are you a fan of the Necron Cryptex? Which of their disciplines do you find most useful or powerful? 
let us know and discuss in the comments below. Was this video informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for more content. And if you'd like to give my channel a small helping hand, please visit my Patreon page, the link for which is in the video description. Thank you very much for watching, and I wish you all an awesome day. May the Silent King watch over you.